Hey guys, it's Ash, and many of you guys have requested in seeing some Town Hall 10 and 11 uh, farming attacks. So in this video, I'm going to share my usual method of farming as a Town Hall 10 or 11 player, and that's simply G Barge with lots of giants, 16 of them in fact, eight wall breakers, a couple of barbarians, and a bunch of archers. So simply to train this uh, composition, I usually boost two barracks. So on the first two barracks. I train four wall breakers each and eight giants each as well uh, and also fill the rest with barbarians on one barrack but on three barracks I train all archers. You can also simply spread them out if you're not boosting any uh, barracks and this way boosting two barracks allows me to conserve my gems and also use them to boost my spells because spells uh, you do want to use multiple spells to farm against opposing town hall 10s or 11 bases that are pretty strong you want to use more than one spell such as a rage and a freeze or a rage and a jump so to cook my spells i sync them in this manner basically two rage one jump one freeze two rage one jump one freeze and so on uh, as for my dark spells just cook one poison spell for safety but if you're not in need of dark elixir you can cook all earthquake spells earthquake spells are very good for farming same as uh, if you're not in need of dark elixir you can cook all witches and witches are very good for farming if you're not in dark elixir uh, with this method so now i'm going to show you guys some attacks using this composition okay awesome find uh, around 1 million in total resource and we're going to attack from the left because of those two elixir collectors right here um, actually I'm just going to put two two archers and I'm going to attack from either the top or the bottom that way uh, I can focus on one inferno and one hero looking at the base he has one inferno inactive and one of them active that means I'm going to attack from the top uh, this way I can remove that multi inferno threat uh, that's right there on the out. that's pretty exposed uh, quickly with my troops and then make my way uh, towards the south so here I'm gonna send out my queen I'm gonna send everything barbarians archers and let's see have my wall breakers target they're gonna target that wall right here uh, they're not gonna go inside yet but we're gonna use a raid spell and a jump spell to assist them and uh, there we go uh, wall breaker did make it through eventually and here I'm gonna activate that eternal tome uh, as you know, the plan is to remove that Inferno Tower as soon as possible to uh, make it easier for my troops to then uh, get inside, avoid the other Inferno Tower since it's inactive, they can uh, freely ignore it. And here I'm going to activate, not yet, uh, now I'm going to activate her ability because she was getting targeted by one of the Expos. And I do want to keep her at good health. So that's going to be my goal here. That expo has been taken out. I still have a bunch of archers going on the left and right side. Uh, those are level 7 mortars and with the level 13 Grand Warden and his life aura ability, he's able to allow my archers to live off of a shot from a level 7 mortar. So as you can see right there, my archers were able to live uh, even though they're level 7 archers, they are able to live from that level 7 mortar uh, because of the Grand Warden's life aura. Here, uh, the Archer Queen could not make it, and it looks like we're gonna we're about to lose our Grand Warden, but we still managed to get almost all of it. So in total, around 940,000, awesome, plus the 220,000 in uh, loot bonus. Nice, finding lots of these rushed Town Hall 10 and 11 bases uh, here at Masters 3. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna attack from I'm gonna attack from the top because the Town Hall does carry uh, loot and um, because both of those infernal towers are right here at the south so I can avoid them for the majority of the battle uh, of the raid. So I'm gonna spread my giants around here and I'm gonna focus on the far top right and top left structures first with my barbarians and archers and then send in my Grand Warden, my heroes up top. And now as you can see, I've cleared uh, enough space right there for my troops from the top now to go straight towards the core. So here I'm gonna couple my wall breakers and my troops uh, with the rage spell. 
and look at my wall breakers he does have a clan castle giant i'm not gonna waste my poison because with the rage spell my archers are gonna very quickly uh going to remove that dragon threat and right at this point i'm going to activate my grand warden's ability eternal tome and i'm also going to use uh, another rage spell because i do need that rage spell to quickly remove those uh infernal tower threats before they deal enough damage to my um barbarians and archers so i do need to keep my barbarians and archers alive if i want to get uh, all the resource from this base so there i popped the eternal tome i used uh, my king's ability and I've uh, practically removed all the splash defenses, uh, splash defense threats such as uh, the mortar and the wizard tower as well as the multi infernals are now gone so it should be very easy uh, for my troops to now grab the rest of the resource. So over there I have, I have the witch and uh, she should be able to get that storage over there. I'm gonna lose the ward in here it seems and my king uh, but it's well worth it since I still have my queen left. And uh, she's she's much better at farming than both of my queen, uh, my barbarian king and warden. So it's all good. I still have everything uh, three star this base and managed to get in total around seven hundred thousand in total resource plus the two hundred twenty thousand bonus, along with over three thousand three hundred in total dark elixir. Okay, so around 600,000 in total. We're gonna attack from the left side or the right side, that way only focus on one Inferno at a time. He has a Warden on the left, so I guess uh, just attack from the right. Uh, but if you're in need of Dark Elixir, you should attack from the left, but I'm not in need of Dark Elixir. I'm basically going for Gold and Elixir, so I'm gonna attack from the right side here. So first send out the side, side troops, your Barbarians and Archers, and then you can spread your Archers and barbarians and also deploy two groups of wall breakers so at least one of them make it through so they made it through over here they weakened that wall though uh, and then we're gonna just couple them with a raid spells and then the rest of our barbarians and archers so those archers here send out you want to send out everything as well as the clan castle troops we got some hog riders which is pretty cool because uh, I have a raid spell right there that's gonna assist them to go straight towards that core uh, so that's great. Now there's a single inferno, so I'm not I'm not even gonna waste my free spell because archers and barbarians are very good at distracting uh, single target infernos. So here we've cored the base. We've got our archer in there, archer queen in there, uh, and we should be able to get two more storages hopefully. So activate her ability here. Giant bomb, no. And she's going for the mortar, so I guess we have to end it there. But good, decent loot. 280,000 gold, 170,000, plus the bonus here. Uh, so that in total is around uh, like 650,000 in total. So that's great. Okay, against this Town Hall 10 base, very rushed base. Uh, lots of elixir being offered. So we're going to attack from the top side. This way we can get all three of those elixir storages and make our way towards the bottom now he also doesn't have infernal tower so it's gonna make our life much easier uh, we're gonna use that poison spell on those clan castle troops and now we're gonna spread our barbarians I'm using two hands and I'm uh, constantly tapping deploying my troops on the top you also want to deploy your warden early as as early as possible when once you've deployed a few troops because uh, you want him to buff your barbarians and archers Okay, some giant bombs over here and there. So definitely an in, definitely an active base. He has his traps active and everything. Just a really weak base though. So you can really feel the difference. You can really see that our barbarians and archers are living longer because of the Grand Warden. Uh, if we didn't have him, our we probably would have lost all of our barbarians and archers by now. Now the main reason we're not we're unable to make that extra push is because we're lacking we're lacking a rage spell. So yeah, that's why we were unable to make that extra push. So we're just gonna end it here. I don't wanna really Yeah, I don't really wanna harm my queen any longer. There's only like a hundred thousand elixir left. Uh, but we're gonna end it there. We're gonna get a lot of 
resource in total around 480,000 plus 200,000 in total so around 680,000 in total resource and 1500 dark elixir Okay, that will be it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys again soon in the next episode. Later.